Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool PCB repair video for you today. We are working on, can you tell what board this is? This is a Lethal Enforcers game board. One of the ways you can always tell is uh, it's got to be Konami if it's got this uh, screwed up audio chip on it, right? But this one's actually, the audio's still working. We'll probably still recap that thing so it doesn't get any worse, but everybody's seen that repair video, how to do the uh, audio repair. But I've got a uh, another issue here that I'm working on. And I thought it was going to be a simple one, so I just went ahead and fixed it. But now it's getting complicated, so I thought, hey, why not film a video? Why waste all of this time and trouble and not get a video out of it? So this is the PCB. We've got it on our test bench here. And I am in the test menu. So I'm going to actually see if I can get out of here. Uh, player one start exit. I'll show you what we're working with here. So the lethal enforcers, the sound is actually working. But that's pretty bright. You might not even be able to tell what's going on. Basically there are bars all over the screen. But it seems to be working just fine. There's just bars all over the screen. So I'm trying to figure out why it's doing that. Now we had an issue where whenever it was first coming up, it was telling me that one of the RAM chips was bad. And the chip may be bad, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, when I was checking, boy, that's, that's so weird how it's doing that. When I was checking the RAM, there was a signal missing. So one of the, or two of the lines actually, were missing from the RAM chip. Um, so what I did was, I tracked it back and what the signal that was missing came from this chip here. So I swapped this chip, which got us to boot up. So now we're going to see if the other line's missing or what the deal is and why we're getting uh, all those lines. It's probably what's going on. but. So what I'm going to do is, on this board, it has this thing where if the test button is held down when it comes up, it does a little test. And you can also do tests in the, uh, in the test menu and everything. So we're going to do all that. Now, people that really know what they're doing, just use it like, uh, you know, they've got a scope and all of this technical stuff, like a logic analyzer and all this stuff. All I've got is a logic probe, a brain, some schematics, and a TV screen. So, hopefully we can fix it with that. If we can't, I'm in trouble. I've also got a big mess. There's stuff laying all over the place here. Um, boy, that was corrupted. Okay, so what I'm going to do, we're going to do that little test thing first, and I'll show you how that went. Um, let's see here. I'm doing all this with one hand. Let's see if I can hold this test button down with my Coke can without spilling it on the board. I don't know why I'm doing this on video. That's a good way to get people to mock you. Okay, so if you're holding the test button down whenever the board comes up, it stays on this screen because it's checking the EEPROM. I think this will clear up here in a second. Okay, so it says checking EEPROM. Everything's upside down because on Lethal Enforcers, uh, uh, it uses a mirror in the cabinet so that it's actually displayed on the monitor upside down. So, uh, it, it says, um, it's basically checking all of these, and it's saying they're all okay. This one is K6, and this one is L6. Those are both RAM chips, and it's these two RAM chips right here. Well, checking with my Logic Probe, there were two lines missing on both of those RAM chips, and it was failing K6, and then it would reset, and sometimes it would fail L6, and etc., 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 so, um, by replacing the one chip, we got the one signal back, and it got everything back up and running. So, now whenever you turn it on, it comes up into the game menu, and actually boots. You'll probably get some sound here in a second. It might be loud. Watch your ears. So, we're going to, uh, well that looks a lot better, doesn't it? We're going to go down to uh, 
game options. I have a um, gun plugged in just so I can do this. Did it look this good a minute ago? Did it just fix itself while I was sitting here? Uh, sound in the track mode. Completely off. Let's turn it down to. Video screen flip mirror, no mirror. Okay. Save and exit. Okay. Did it look? It had lines in it a minute ago, right? Did it fix itself? Color check. No, it did not. Okay, so uh, this screen has me kind of confused because this is saying red, yellow, green, cyan, I guess, blue. I think that's an N, V, or maybe that's a W. But we don't have that going on. So when you go screen to screen, red, green, blue, white. So I don't know if that... I would think that there, maybe this should be red, which would lead you to think that it's some kind of color RAM problem or something. Again, we're just trying to think through it so we know what area to look at. Basically, the, the reason I'm, I go through this like this is because I'm trying to figure out which areas of the board it's probably not. So I can figure out which areas of the board it's not. I can exclude those and not work on those. Okay. So I guess it was already like this. Um... We want to do uh, sound check. We didn't need to do mask ROM check. Okay, that's probably what it does when it first starts. Or maybe not. All right. That's interesting. Two. I wonder what happens at zero. Oh, it goes to the next one. Okay, so it's checking the ROMs. I think they're going to be fine. Usually you don't get lines like that from anything but like a missing address line or a, uh, a bad RAM chip. I'm going with bad RAM chip. But we'll go find out. It's weird how it just kind of... comes and goes, right? <laughs> Did it find a bad RAM? I mean, a bad ROM? Or is that just what it does? Now, I have another Lethal Enforcers board here that the audio is all screwed up on. Um, we're going to see if we can wait 15 seconds on this to see if it comes out of this whenever it's done with its little countdown. Okay, K8. If that says K8, does that say K8? K8 bad. Mask ROM check. K8 bad. What in the world is K8? Oh, X8. Looks like there's an X and a V. X8 is bad, people. Well, I don't like that. That's not an easy chip to swap. Ugh, that might be bad, man. <laughs> mm. So I wonder if I could pull this up in MAME and screw up chip X8 and see if it, if I get the same problem. You know, I wasn't noticing earlier. Oh, man, I just pushed on it. And look what it did. You know what that means? Might be able to do a little reflow. Oh snap. Maybe a little reflow will fix it. What do you think? Y'all down for a little reflow? Push P1 start exit. Okay, let's go back out to the game and then let me hit.
basically I'm flexing the board. Ooh, getting a little better, getting a little better. If I can get it to be good, then I'll know that. Man. That's strange. Okay, so we got to look at that, and then uh, Ross, I'm going to show you what I was talking about with the signals on these two RAM chips because there's I fixed one, but the other one may still be screwed up. So we're going to check that. So let me uh, let me get the logic probe, and we'll look through that real quick. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. Um, I've got my logic probe hooked up. This board doesn't really have a good place to it attach it that I could tell at least so what I did was I had to put it on the power supply which isn't optimal but it'll work like that so the logic probe is hooked up to power supply and I have printed out a little bit of the schematics so what I was finding earlier was it was telling me alternately that this chip or this chip which are two RAM chips located here and here were bad and the game wouldn't even boot it would just come up and say bad Okay, so I started looking through, and these these get these signals that it calls CA1 through CA13 on this side of these RAM chips, the inputs, I guess. Um, it has them all labeled as A, so I guess it's actually address lines. Uh, so, what I was getting was, the top two address lines, 12 and 13, were both low. Now, I never went to school for this. I don't completely understand how it works. I've never coded, never done software. But I believe sometimes you get a situation where all of your address lines pulse, but the top couple might not because it seems like the higher up you get, the less they use it. So maybe they, maybe some of the program doesn't use the top address lines. Okay, folks, I had a, I had a customer come in. So anyway... So as best I understand it, these top two being low, I don't think it's a problem. I think it just doesn't use that that uh, space up there or whatever. I don't know. I'm not completely sure how it works, but just from doing a bunch of them, I've noticed that. Okay, but so you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. What I was getting earlier was, whenever it was telling me that this chip or this chip was bad, notice all of these address lines go to both chips. So what I was getting was no signal on pin 25 and no signal on pin 5. I don't mean a low signal. I mean no signal. It was open, floating, you would call it. Uh, and that is CA9 and CA6. So basically, it should never be floating. It should be either low or high or pulsing. It probably should be pulsing, but, you know. So... With those signals missing, you're going to get problems. So what I did was I tracked that back, and this signal and this signal come from U62 and U59. And the output of those is pin 5, which then goes over to here to these. So uh, I looked on U62 and U59, looked at pin 5, there was no output, blah, blah, blah. Those are 74 LS151. So we're going to check that again and see if, because I only replaced one of them, which made the board start booting. But it could just be that the other one needs replaced. So I'm going to go back into the uh, these RAM chips, and we're going to check it again. So we can check this one. I can't see too good because I don't want to lean over it because then I'm going to I'm trying to hold it to where you can see it. Well, come on now. Pin one is high. Um. Uh, yeah, that's connected to 5, so we're good. Pin 2 is now pulsing. And you see how it changes depending on what's on the screen? You can't see, but the screen's changing. It's still in a track mode. Pin 3, pulsing. Pin 4, pulsing. So pin 5 was one of the ones that was screwed up. Pin 5 is now pulsing. 
Okay. Pin six pulsing. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen is low. But according to my paper here, pin 14 is not on here, which means it's probably the ground for the chip. Okay. Pin 15 is pulsing. 16 is pulsing. 17. 18. 19. 20 is low, but if you look on the schematic, 20 it says CS1, which I guess means chip select one maybe, and it's tied into what it says is ground on that line over to the right of it. So it's supposed to be like that. So 20, 21 is pulsing, 22 is pulsing. Now notice that they're all pulsing and doing stuff, but I don't know if that's right, you know, it's just doing stuff. 23 pulsing, 24 pulsing, now 25 is the other one that was screwed up, and it still is. So I'm on pin 25, I'm getting no signal at all, and the screen is going crazy. Like there's just static all over the screen. So what's going on is, this, this logic probe, the way it works is it sends a little bit of juice out the uh, end of it, or it can take a little juice or whatever. Look. Clearly, I'm not technical, right? But there's power in here it's, <laughs> that's, that's now connected to that damn chip that it hasn't been getting a signal, and it's making the screen do crazy, crazy stuff. All kinds of static and things, right? Uh, the lines are still there, but obviously there should be something there. So pin 25, I'm getting no signal, and that ain't good. 26 is low, but if you look on here... Um, it's connected straight to 5, it says. 27's got a little bit of a pulse popping off. And 28 is high. It's the last pin. It's probably the 5-volt pin for the, uh, for the board. So, we're still missing number 25. Well, where that comes from is U62... Pin 5 is the output for it, which is an LS151. So that is right... No, I got that wrong. U59. U62 is the one that I replaced. Yeah. So J11. There, by the way, there's a typo in the manual. It says J10, but if you look, there's another chip right below it that says J10. So J11 is the right one. So J11, the output is pin 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Five, we get no output. The screen's going crazy when I do that. Pin six, by the way, seems to be like the inversion of that on a 74LS151. It's not outputting anything either. Okay, I had the same thing going on with this chip. So on this one, pin one is pulsing. Pin two is low. Pin three is pulsing. Pin four is pulsing. Pin 5 is pulsing like it should, 6 is pulsing, 7 is low, 8 is low. So I've got nothing on 5 and nothing on 6. Okay, so let's look at the schematics and I'll show it to you a little better on that. Alright, so we're looking at the lethal enforcer schematics which are available all over the interwebs. And um, the CA9 signal is what we're missing. And so this is a 74LS151. I have no clue how it works. Don't really even need to know. This pin here is not outputting anything. And this pin here is not outputting anything. Since this pin is not tied to anything, since this isn't outputting anything, it's almost a dead giveaway that it's got to be this damn chip. You could have a situation where this one 
Well, the way the way it's working right now, where it's just floating, there's no up or down. It's pretty much got to be this chip, right? And we've got all of this is going on. It's either high or low or pulsing, but just nothing out here. And oh, here's my typo I was talking about. Look, they're saying U58 is in position J10, but they also say U59 is in position J10. Okay, so so this should be J11 actually. If you run into this, so anyway, uh, not so it's not outputting anything. But to 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 further prove it, earlier, this one was doing the exact same thing. So I was also missing this signal. This one was dead. This one was dead. I swapped this chip. Now this one's fine. So uh, what I'm going to do is. We've pretty much proven, I think, that this chip needs to go, J11, U59. So I'm going to swap that chip, put a socket in, and then we'll plug it in and see what we got. Okay, so I swapped the chip. That gave me that address line back and changed a lot of what's going on on the screen. The colors have changed. But remember how we were in that color test where the, uh, the bars I was saying I didn't think looked right? See, that was red before, like it's supposed to be, but it actually looks a little bit better. It's just the wrong color now. And then watch one at the uh, Don't Drew Drugs message. Oh, it didn't show it, but th that part looks a lot better, too. Um, so it, it looks a little crazier, but I think it's actually a little better because a lot of the stuff's a little clearer now. Um, even though we got issues. So let's go to color check again. Yeah, see what I mean? The color is back, but remember that wasn't there before. So red, yellow, green, blue. No, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue. That's an M, magenta, W for white. So I think we've still got a problem. I reflowed this this um, chip here. So I think we've got a problem with the board flexing. There's something going on here. It's one of these surface mount chips, maybe. Let me see here. So that right now it's going crazy. If I some serious flex problems here. They, it, these things, see how they have the feet still on it? They mount in the cabinet like that, and what's happened is somebody stored it like that, and then they put weight on it, and over the years it's cracked something loose. So, so yeah, so let's do the, max, the mask ROM check again. Okay, so... This will take a minute, but I want to see if it's going to fail that X8 again. I wonder if it's while it's doing that I can check my... my uh, signal that was missing. So that's 25. That's that one that was missing. It's now there because we swapped this chip. It still could be those RAM though, but it, it does a little RAM test at the beginning and it actually passes those. So, Oh look, it's saying RAM check real big on the screen, I think. I think. <laughs> it's saying something in the middle there. Four, three, two, one. Or I guess it's saying... It wouldn't be saying RAM check. 
Yeah, X8, it's telling me is bad. It cannot talk to X8. So maybe what we could do is check the lines on that, you know. Because if it can't see it, it can't think that it's good. So uh, we'll get the schematics for that, and then we'll check all the, all the lines on X8 and see if any of them are missing. Maybe we'll get lucky, and it's not the actual chip, and it's just uh, a trace or something. Okay, so after reading online... The lines in the screen very well could be caused by this mass chip here that it says is bad. And uh, I was seeing our buddy Womble, I think that's his name, Womble or Wombi, <laughs> over in Australia. Apparently he's seen a ton of these, he said, that had uh, mask chips that had uh, uh, went bad. And he said that they're usually the ones on the edge of the board, so he thinks it's like a static thing. Could be. Uh, but he said he's fixed a lot of these Konami boards with bad mass chips, so it's telling me this one's bad. I looked in the schematics, I couldn't find any uh, uh, any schematic that actually shows the mask chips, ROMs. Everybody doesn't like when I say chips. The mask integrated circuits. So uh, I'm going to replace that one. So I've got a uh, I've got a uh, uh, ROM burner with an adapter on it. And we burnt one of these bad boys. It's a 27C160. I'm not super knowledgeable about these, but this is twice the size of this one. So what I did was I burnt the file on there twice. So we'll see. Um, but I had to split it and all this kind of crap. But anyway, it's on that chip. It's on that integrated circuit. Um, so I'm going to have to cut this one out, put a socket in and then put the chip in, the integrated circuit in. And the reason I cut it out is because it, we know that one's bad, or we assume that one's bad. Um, and since it's such a big chip, it's got 42 pins. If you try to desolder every pin and then take it all out at once, there's a real good chance you'll screw it up. So I'm going to cut the pins off and then remove each pin one at a time so it's nice and clean. And it takes forever. Probably take me an hour to do it, but uh, <laughs> I'll come back when we got it out and the new socket in. Okay, folks, so we have our EEPROM in. I, I, I will be putting a window over that, so don't fret. Just imagine there's a window already there. I mean, a sticker already there. There. How better, right? Um, so let's see if that fixed anything. Remember, we were getting our... Uh, it's been a couple days since I worked on it. You were probably just watching it on the video. Okay, so all those... Hmm. So our lines are gone, and that all looks right, but there's some noise going on in the background. Let me see if I can adjust your brightness down. There you go. Uh, yeah, so the color looks off to me. Look, there's no noise on that screen, though. Ugh, that's all messed up. Okay, so we definitely still got issues. Let's go back into test mode. I think that's supposed to be black. Let's go check and see if our uh, see if our mask ROM is still bad. It may be that I didn't burn it right or something. Uh, how do I do this? I gotta hit the trigger. All right, now remember this is the one that it runs real crazy. Remember though, when we first started, all of this was black and there was like noise rolling through the screen. Well, now it's just blue. That line you just saw go through the screen, that's just an artifact of the camera. That's not actually doing that on the display. But I think the background is now uh, like a cyan color when, it, when it's supposed to be black. Okay, so remember X8 is the one that we had a problem with. But we had a lot more noise in the picture before, and that's gone now. So apparently the board just had multiple faults. Or I could have screwed up a socket, too. Okay, so now I can see that it says VRAM check 7... Six. I don't know if it's supposed to look like that though when it's checking it. Five. 
four, three, two, one. Okay, well that's good. Um, hmm, I don't know if the VRAM though is the same thing, but our X8 is now saying okay. So the, the chip that I burned uh, is working apparently. So remember, I'm trying to, I'm telling you to remember, you just watched it, but I, I did it a couple days ago. We had a RAM telling us it was bad, and uh, two signals were missing. Put these two chips back on, that got the signals back, which got the color back, but it looks like it overdid it. Um, hmm. Okay, so we need to do some more logic probe work. So let me see what I can find. Or on those, I'm, I'm still leaning towards these same two RAM. This is an interesting screen. So remember what we had before. And look how the tops of the red, the yellow, the green, the cyan are fine. They're perfectly fine. We might need the brightness turned up a little bit on the monitor. But uh, remember, we had the red not there. But we got it back, and when we did, if you look on the old video, this was like cyan, but now it had now it has red in it. So it's all both of these are purple. Those those should be two different tones. That should be blue, and that should be magenta. So we've just got magenta. So that the way we fixed that before was with uh, I think this chip. So I need to do some more testing around those RAMs because those are kind of like the color RAM, well video RAM, I guess. All right, folks, so after looking around a little bit, I noticed that the main screen, uh, you know, it was blue and it wasn't red. And I remembered that whenever we swapped, looking back on the video, whenever we swapped this one, it changed the color. So I checked all of the pins on this one just to be sure. And pin 9 down here I didn't have in. 9 is supposed to be connected on all of them, and it was not. So I had a problem with that pin while I was messing with it. I also found this one up here, G6. That is the same type of chip, a 74151, um, that had the exact same problem. Pins 5 and 6 were dead. So it's one of those things where there's several of these same exact chips on the board. And um, some people would argue that they're all going to go bad. Because we had three failed on the same board. So, um, yeah, I mean, you could argue that you should probably replace all of them because they're eventually going to fail. But, that got us up and going. Look at that. Doesn't it look great? Got the color right. Got rid of all of the staticky, staticky stuff. Got the screen red again, and got the enforcers nice and clean where you can read it again. So if we go into test, I want to show you what the color screen is supposed to look like. If I can. All right, so that's what we were looking for the whole time. Red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, white. Okay, folks, so we have slid it back in our game here. We've got the... Uh, the whole cabinet. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Look how cool. We've got it back in the game. I'm going to uh, put up the tripod and we'll play it a little bit. But another one saved. Now whenever I started, uh, after I fixed it, the sound started messing up. So I had to recap the sound and get it all working good too. I would show you that video, but um, I didn't use the surface mount capacitors I use the uh, the regular radial ones and then people will bitch and complain so you have to watch somebody else doing it the right way right but uh <laughs> we got it we got it sounding good layer one isn't that awesome layer two huh. amazing um so I'll set up the tripod and we'll play it a little bit and just make sure it's okay all right so we'll test it out layer a little two. bit Boom. Boom, you did. You can't kill me, Yes, I can. 
All right, folks, so we got it up and running. Everything's cool, and now we got this cool game we can sell to, oh, no, that we can sell to someone here in our store. Now, if you want to see us play through this game, we've actually got a, uh, a whole video that we shot. <laughs> shot, get it? Um, here on YouTube. I missed the bullet. I missed the gun five times. Did you see that? Player two. Magnum bullets. So I'll link the video uh, after this video so you can watch this play through a little more. Oh no, she looked just like the other woman. Don't shoot! Very cool. Don't shoot! Help me! All right, so I'll uh, I'll link the other video that we shot of us playing all the way through it. Um, but we hope you enjoyed the. Uh, video of us repairing it. Leave your comments below. We try to respond to as many of them as we can. It's such a cool game. Like I, like I mentioned, these have sound issues. So uh, you have to uh, rebuild the sound. Essentially, you have uh, like capacitors on this little custom chip that go bad. You have to replace those. I did it, but it's a little sloppy, so I didn't film it. You can you can go watch other people's videos on that. They'll show you the perfect way to do it, the, the good way to do it, right? But uh, we got it up and running. And mainly, I was just trying to fix the graphic problems that we had. So we got all that good. Everything's cool. It's all copacetic. No. Player one. Okay. Player two. Player two. All right, folks. So there it is. I always love the side art on this thing. Look at that. It's like an old Caprice or something. They said they filmed this in Chicago. Like they, they shot that picture in Chicago. And I saw a thing uh, a while back where the guy that's on the marquee, this guy, was selling his personal Lethal Enforcers arcade game. And he wanted like a fortune for it. Good for him. All right, so leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. And uh, we appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up. And you can see all the games that we have for sale on our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. Or you can come by and see us. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina. Uh, we've got a showroom full of games that we're selling. Boy, she looks like she's full. She's serious, isn't she? Check her out. Ain't going to be no problems. <laughs> so check out our website. You can see all our stuff. We have a building here in Rock Hill full of arcade games for sale uh, that you can come by and see if you're local. Now, if you're not local, just subscribe to us here on YouTube. And every time we get one of these suckers done, we will film a little video of it. Oh, and the Amazon thing. So... We put a little link to something on Amazon down below, and you can go look at that. And if you don't want to buy that, that's fine. But since you clicked our link to go to Amazon, Amazon has this Amazon Associates program where they give us a little tip for sending you uh, to Amazon. And uh, so you can go on Amazon and buy a pencil for 50 cents, and we get a little tip. Or you could buy a house like a mobile home or something. And we've been seeing people purchasing things on there to support us, and we appreciate that. It doesn't raise your prices or anything. Uh, it's just if you click that link, they say, hey, they got here from Lions Arcade, Joe's Video Games, uh, YouTube video. And so they say, well, I guess we got to pay those guys for sending somebody to us. So it doesn't raise your prices or anything. We check that out to make sure, because if it raised your price, why in the hell would you do that? 
but uh, it, the cool thing is it gives us this little list of stuff that people have bought. Now, it doesn't say who bought anything or it doesn't even say... It says nothing about usernames or, or any, you know, the name of anybody that bought anything. It just says somebody bought this, 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 and this. It doesn't even say somebody bought these two items. It, it just says these are the things that somebody bought. And so it's kind of cool because you see what people buy. And so people buy a lot of food. Uh, there's a few people out there that are buying a bunch of computer stuff. We appreciate that. Um, so uh, we've been... We've been uh, enjoying that and we're, we're wondering if people are going to start buying weird things just to troll us so far none of that though it seems what most people buy is food I, I, I never would have thought that but at least the people that are buying stuff after going on our link they're buying food like I guess people buy a lot of food on Amazon I might have to check that out maybe it's cheaper or something but uh, we appreciate that we also appreciate that we've been getting a lot of people from all over the world watching our videos. So we've got uh, people in Croatia that are telling us they're watching our videos. We've had people in Ireland tell us that they're watching our videos. Someone in Italy mentioned that they are watching our videos in Italy. So that's pretty cool, people. So uh, if you're from an uh, interesting corner of the world, mention it in the comments below and we'll try to give you a shout out in a future video. So we hope you enjoyed it. We got this sucker back up and running, which we enjoyed. And, uh, Leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up for filming it. And we'll see you on the next video. Lethal Enforcers!